This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven and today we are working on pneumatics for the index pick and place. This whole time that I've been working on the index, I've been using one form of controlling all the air, all the vacuum pressure that I need to actually pick and place components. And this is what it looks like. Okay, so the first and arguably most important part of this whole thing is the pump. This is what's actually generating the vacuum. This is the one that I'm currently using, but it's also huge, and I would really like to be able to find a smaller one if possible. From the pump, I have some tubing, which goes to a press fit between two different kinds of tubing. And then this black tubing goes into this awesome little coupler. And what this will do is keep a really, really good air seal, but also be able to spin. Then this thing screws right into the stepper motor with that really cheeky hollow shaft, and lets you pull the vacuum straight through, and then the little nozzle component threads the other side. I'm also not at all monitoring the vacuum level inside the line. A lot of pick and place builds will have a vacuum sensor tied into that whole pneumatic line so it can see whether or not it's picked apart. If a part is on the nozzle, it's gonna be pulling much more of the vacuum because it's kind of all sealed off. But if there is no part on the end of the nozzle, it's just trying to pull a vacuum to open air and it's not really gonna pull that much of a negative pressure. So with a little vacuum sensor, you're actually able to tell if you have a part on the tip. It's really cool. So today we are gonna find a better motor, one that's hopefully smaller and the correct voltage for the whole system that I'm building. And we're gonna figure out how to actually monitor the vacuum level so we can check and see if a part's been picked without having to get a camera involved. Welcome to the Vacuum Pump Showdown. My name is Stephen Hosnett, I will be your host. These are the two pumps that we're gonna take a look at. They both are 12 volts. I got them both online pretty easily. And then I'm gonna use this monstrosity as a point of comparison to see how well they hold up to the vacuum pressure I've been working with this whole time so far. I've set up a little test jig here. I got a brand spanking new power supply, a little mount for the pumps, and I have three different size components that I'm gonna test and see how well it can pick them. The first is an 0805 resistor, then a NeoPixel, and then a TQFP 32 IC. And I printed out some specific nozzles with different openings for each from half a millimeter to two millimeters. So we'll see how well they compare. All right, let's do the big one first. Nice. All right, 0805, no problem. Easy peasy. Same thing for the NeoPixel. Whoops. Oh my God, maybe not so much. <laughs> Ooh, that one whistles. And then the TQFP, no problems there either. Sick. All right, now we're getting into dicey territory. First, we'll give this one a whirl. Rise, my son. All right, first up, 0805. All right, picks it up, that's great. Now the NeoPixel, yeah, that is struggling with that nozzle. I'm gonna bring it up to a larger size. All right, cool. So the two millimeter nozzle works fine for NeoPixels. And then it's kind of borderline for the TQFP with the two millimeter nozzle. Now for the last one. Please don't judge me for my super jank pneumatic coupling system, which is just shoving tubing inside other tubing. Show me what you got. All right, there we go. Lovely. No problems. Let's go on to the NeoPixel. All right, it picks it. It doesn't pick it very well, but it's better than the other 12 volt pump. I'm gonna bump up to a bigger nozzle for that. All right, yeah, that's rock solid. And lastly, the TQFP. Oh, that's way better. Great, okay. This one seems like it's gonna be a pretty good replacement. New pump. <laughs> the coupler that I've been using to allow the rotation stepper motor to spin while also allowing air to pass through leaks like a sieve. I was curious how much pressure I was actually losing through the whole line. So I started to slowly remove things and cover it up with my thumb to see how much the motor like tried to change how hard it was running. And as soon as I removed this, it was a night and day difference. I just put direct tubing straight into the whole stepper motor assembly now. So there's no leaky rotation joint. This is also only a one millimeter nozzle, but it can hold a freaking dip eight. No problem now. What this is kind of making me think about doing instead is not having a coupler at all, and it will just kind of twist the tubing up to 180 degrees in each direction before it picks it, and then it will rotate back to a zero position, and that works totally fine. And I can just make sure there's enough tubing to allow for that, and it'll be okay. Mm. Oh, that's so exciting. All right, we have picked our vacuum pump. Now it is time to figure out how to check the vacuum pressure going through the line. For this, I have chosen probably my new favorite component. This little guy is a pressure sensor. That long little port on the end of it is actually so you can put tubing over this component and it can check the vacuum or pressure inside some kind of pneumatic line. But it also mounts directly onto a circuit board through the board. You cut a hole through it, you mount it on the back side, 
and the port sticks through the top. It's so cool. The sensor itself is kind of dumb though. It doesn't like spit out a, a number of how many kilopascals it's sensing. It is effectively a Wheatstone bridge. A Wheatstone bridge is an array of resistors that looks kind of like this. A few of these resistors can change their resistance when they're deformed somehow. So a lot of people will put Wheatstone bridges on things to see how much a beam will bend. They will actually glue them onto a beam, and when the beam bends, it will actually take a couple of those resistors and stretch them out and change their resistance. And when those resistors deform and change their resistance, the voltage at these points changes too, which lets you actually measure how much they're being deformed. It's wicked cool. This little component is pretty much just a Wheatstone bridge, but it's on a little flexure disc that changes the pressure. It's pretty freaking awesome. This is a really tiny component. And I have no way to actually talk to this right now. So I'm gonna mill a quick little breakout board so I can solder this to it and put it into a breadboard so I can start testing with it. Alrighty, we've got a tiny little breakout board for the vacuum sensor. It is freaking adorable. So now that I have it in a way that I can like interface with it pretty easily, it's time to figure out how to get a workable signal out of it. In the data sheet, the manufacturer suggests that you give it a constant current source. They suggest using this whole op amp configuration, which I've never done before. I've never even really worked with op amps very much before. So this is all kind of up in the air for me. So the other thing the manufacturer recommends is you take those two voltages and you put them into a differential amplifier, which is another way of configuring an op amp where these two lines go into the op amp and it takes that difference and it turns it into an offset above ground, which is great. It makes it super easy to read in that signal with an ADC pin on a microcontroller. And it also amplifies it a ton. So I have taken a crack at doing the schematic for all this stuff, but I'll be honest with you, analog circuitry kind of scares the crap out of me. So I'm gonna try and make this out on the breadboard and see if I can get something working out of it. Yeah! Mm. <laughs> Everything is wired up in the breadboard and I'm going to turn it on for the first time. Right now my scope is hooked up to the output of the differential amplifier, so that means if there's any change in the vacuum sensor at all, we should see a change in the scope. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Nothing. <laughs> okay. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> so, I kind of have something coming out of it now. I just hooked the scope up to one of the midpoints on the Wheatstone bridge that's inside the sensor. And when I cover up the hole, you can see just the tiniest change in the voltage that I have on the oscilloscope. Isn't that just like the most imperceptible change ever? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> ah. I have made the smallest incremental improvement, but I have a workable signal. I really like digital. I don't like analog stuff at all. It's been four days of me trying to find a way to get a good signal out of this sensor. And just now, five minutes ago, I got it working. 
but please feast your eyes upon the labors of my past, what is four days and hours? Okay, pump is on, pretty much the same setup. Do you see that tiny little movement? I think it's literally like 0.3 volts of a difference. That's it. That's literally it. Okay, so some lessons learned here. If you can buy a chip that does complicated signal gathering, especially when it's like analog stuff, buy the dedicated chip. Don't do it with discrete op amps. Ugh. I really want to like op amps, but after this, I just don't. So the long story short is, one, I'm not using a good op amp for this kind of stuff, I think. It's like general purpose, and I'm trying to do a very specific thing. So instead of hoping that those two voltages change enough to kick the amplifier off and have it actually put out a, a varying signal, I just took one of those and I set it with a voltage divider. That voltage divider is set with a potentiometer, so I can really precisely tune the voltage that it's set to, and then I just have the other one varying around that. I don't know. I don't know. But it does feel really good to get a signal out of this after like four days. But what this all really means is I can now tell if there is a part on the nozzle. This vacuum sensor was the last piece of the puzzle for the next gen of the motherboard which is gonna be the next video. All right, that's it for this one. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like this, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. But first, I wanna thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay has an excellent PCB fab service that I've been using consistently and always get really, really nice results. I'm about to place an order for a really big, really complicated, at least for me, board for the next revision of the motherboard. And I know that when I upload this board file, there's gonna be an engineer at PCBWay that looks through the whole board, catches things that I did that were mistakes, silly things like not plating a hole that I really should be or stuff like that. They go through and they check all the files to make sure that they're ready to go before they put them out to fab. They've caught stuff in the past multiple times that would have totally ruined the board I was trying to order. If you're looking to buy some boards, I highly suggest you check out PCBWay. They're really quick, super cheap, and they always come out absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video.